It's really still with some questions and sort of challenges that arise out of this. Um, the first one is about my, my job personally. There are so many things that I'm being told I have to do and so on. And so many people who want to talk. Conversations split themselves very quickly into two. Those who have an interest in improving the industry, and those who have an interest in improving their own lot, usually at the expense of somebody else in the industry. And those sort of fly by, to be honest. I'll be polite, but I get nothing from them. So the ones I'm interested in are ones that are about the improvement of the industry. But then I always want to, and I'm having a plaque made, I bought this off the internet, and I'm going to have a plaque made that, that, that actually focuses on action. Because the, the only <coughs> conversations that are depressed me since I thought of each other are those which are negative which begin with but, oh well, you know, it'll never change, and so on. So I'm inviting people not to take that line, but to say, let's believe that the zero carbon thing has to be done, and that we're the principal people who can do it. So in that context, what should we do, and what would you like me to do, to make things better? I think we have to ask them whether we can get where we're going with the industry as its current destruction. It is, it gets quite extraordinarily complex. The, the, the number of parties involved, um, and the way they, organize themselves or don't organize themselves or the way they relate or don't relate. So any attempt to sort of map the industry, you know, our highest forum is the strategic forum for construction. You look at the membership below that, it so quickly starts to disintegrate. And apologies for those who are in the Construction Products Association whose name doesn't begin with B. But if I had all of the names in that organization, they would be back down the center of the aisle. There are 300 trade associations represented by the Construction Products Association. And CIC has not many members when you get into organisations below organisations. So, uh, one of the things that was done for me inside, inside BIS was to map the stakeholders just for this exercise. Uh, and I fear this is not complete. But you have to say that it's sort of more complicated than chemistry, isn't it, as a, as a way of trying to relate uh, to, to each other. So, not a single organisation. I, mean, I guess sort of this about last night, I need to follow this. These are organisations that I've met and talked to since I took the job on in December. Something like 80 of them. And, and, and I've seen one suggestion that says you should all merge into one organisation. That's madness. I mean, last night I met with the Ground Forum, this whole business of geotechnics, and I met with the British Association of Interior Designers. What would be the point of them being in the same institution? So we need to find something else outside of ourselves that we cohere around. And I think it's carbon. Because in some way, all of us have obligations that serve back into this issue. Oversimplified maybe, but it gives us focus, it meets the statutory need, and fundamentally it puts us into a place in government where we're hitting their priorities and not pleading our own special case. So we need an old industry that stops pulling against each other, and in the diagram that my own partners used to get pissed off at seeing so often, where there's a mutual interdependence that you can't really work out who's doing the work. It's just a completely different way of looking at how you work together and balance each other's energy. We need that kind of industry, not the type of war industry. Some simple questions. You know, is our whole payment structure actually wrong in rewarding an ever increasing amount of investment in things rather than cleverer ways of reducing the investment? Uh, I don't think it can be. Does our qualification system work well and all the cultures that it spreads? When I started work, I was told, just remember, my boy, the contractors are bastard and the architects are prat except the crap not the word that was used. And that was, your, that was sort of induction into the industry. And to a degree, it, that's still sort of how we learn when we get to work. The, the divisions start, if not at work, actually back in our training. So, is our education system bringing us the right kind of people? We're capable of systems thinking, because the industry lacks systems thinking. One of the biggest questions really, have we even begun to understand the scale of what faces us as an industry, and therefore the opportunities that it brings? There are 26 million existing homes, of which we, we're going to have to get a spectacular amount of carbon out by the year 2050. And the best view is that we're going to do, from between about 2012 and 2050, about 10,000 a week. So an annual program of between 5 and 8 billion a year of residential retrofit. And I don't know that we, this used to be called the elephant in the room, but it's now actually right on our, standing on our toes, so we can't even but we don't really have a plan, I don't think, for it. Uh, there are not enough white vans in the world to, to do the job uh, and to have the skills that are required to do the job. And too many of them have the wrong kind of people inside them for the, for the tasks that we face. So we're not looking for white man van, we're looking for the green man person, as I was correcting the record of the green man van. But we're looking for
for a new kind of organization. And we're looking for a wrap-up around it, which includes program management, from diagnostics, through innovative solutions to maybe insulate houses uh, that are in occupation, uh, to aftercare, uh, and, and a level of attention you know, to, to the product, which has not been our historical norm. Uh, I sometimes said almost, not quite facetiously, that we're going to have to have skills here, that you can put somebody into your house who has the skills of the person the police give you when your kids have been kidnapped. Because your house is going to get kidnapped. If, if we're going to confront this task. Uh, and that kind of care has not been our traditional habit, that we leave places safe. Now, when I talk across the industry about this issue, the answer is, when we believe in that market, we'll get to it. And normally, in my working life, I mean, anyway, skills have not been a big restraint. We've found the people when the work is there. But in this world, there is no supply chain in place that can address it. So that's what it's changed the industry, really, is. You know, who will pull together a proposition for doing this on a national basis? Not one country, or one company, or one solution nationally, but how do we federate the solutions for this across the country in a way that will be tolerable? Because at some point, we're going to have to make some, politicians are going to have to make some very tough decisions. And I can't think of a, of a decision tougher for a politician than the idea that you might have to make your house illegal by a certain date to make you insulated. So we need to get our, our, into that game and find better <coughs> solutions that currently exist to make that decision easier to make, whether it's by how it's paid for, or whether it's encouraged by regulation, or whether it's incentivized through energy pricing, or whatever it might be. But at the moment, we really don't have a proposition for the biggest challenge of all that we face. And then, we have to get to all the existing non-domestic stock as well, some of which is, to say the least, challenging from a carbon point of view. But the assumption is that all of these buildings will be reduced to about 80, by about 80% 80 of their emissions by 2050. All of them. That's all work. We need to rethink about the way that we award and acknowledge good quality <laughs> work and put new criteria into it. Um, this is a slide from Robin Nicholson that some of you may know. He said that in all the years, in the 66 jobs that have come forward for sterling prices, only 10 have been better than building rigs, and only six of those in the UK. So we talk sustainability, but we don't build it. We start saying that it's Absolutely, the, the price of admission to this kind of competition is that you hit those targets. Otherwise, it is not a good building. Next, <coughs> do we have the right facts? We all, I think, jump to prejudices about this. Dubai, as you all know, if we have one planet to live on each, Dubai is currently living on five in terms of its energy consumption. So, Dubai clearly is a wicked place. Uh, and one of my favourite uh, challenges about this is a project which my old firm actually built, which is a ski slope in Dubai. Uh, and the average temperature outside is, is anything up to 25 degrees, and inside it's freezing and you can ski in. And if I told you that was wicked, I'd have you nodding quite quickly. But then you sort of wonder, is that better than them flying to Switzerland to ski? And I don't know the answer. And then you think on again, on the other hand, does that encourage people to learn to ski and then they fly to Switzerland anyway? Uh, I guess we're making the point that, that our instinctive reactions against stuff will not all prove to be right when the sums are done. And I, I met with Tesco last week who told me something rather surprising, that New Zealand land has a lower carbon footprint than Welsh land. Uh, and I kind of wouldn't have guessed that, nor did they. And of course it's politically a rather inconvenient conclusion. But it's the way that they use heated sheds and so on in Wales, some parts of the year, the way that they food stuff are made and so on. So we're going to get some surprises as we start to do this. Um, and, and we need to learn better about whether a ski spoke in Dubai is a good thing or a bad thing and make 